Today I'm going to do the silver mirror reaction, which is one of my very favorite chemical reactions and one of the few that really got me into chemistry to begin with. To get started on this, I needed a chemical called silver nitrate, and initially I was going to cut this footage and only show the reaction itself, but I discovered something interesting while making the silver nitrate that I figured some of you might find interesting. If you would prefer to just see the reaction, feel free to skip to the time shown on screen. Anyway, to make silver nitrate, all you really need to do is dissolve silver in nitric acid, and then allow the silver nitrate to crystallize. If you happen to have access to lab-grade silver and nitric acid, this process is a good deal easier, as silver is extremely sensitive to impurities. In my case here, however, I used silver powder that I precipitated from a crude solution of silver nitrate using copper metal and so there is a tiny amount of undissolved copper still present which will discolor the solution a light blue and need to be removed later. Second, my nitric acid is homemade, and when I made what's left of this specific batch, I really made no effort to minimize chloride impurities. For most reactions, this isn't a problem as the impurity is so slight, but silver chloride in particular is so incredibly insoluble that even slight impurities will leave my silver nitrate solution somewhat hazy. On that note, once my silver was done dissolving, I simply passed the solution through vacuum filtration to remove the insoluble silver chloride. The resulting solution was then boiled down and allowed to cool, which allowed my silver nitrate to crystallize out while the extremely soluble copper chloride was left behind. Now here's the interesting part. Whenever I make a simple salt like this, I nearly always collect the crystals by vacuum filtration, followed by a rinse with cold water and another rinse with acetone or isopropyl alcohol to help them dry. This time was no different, but what I apparently didn't consider carefully enough is that silver nitrate in the presence of excess sulfuric acid and alcohol forms silver 1 fulminate. I obviously knew this was a thing, I've done it several times intentionally, but what I was not aware of is how favorable this reaction was, or that it could proceed using isopropyl rather than ethanol, or at all in such a dilute solution. Turns out that it can. And that said, only about 5 minutes after rinsing my silver nitrate, the filtrate began a very characteristic fulmination. This was not desirable. In the past when I've made silver fulminate intentionally, it was always a very, very tiny amount, and I always made arrangements so I could detonate it safely. What formed here was far more than I'd ever feel safe detonating, so I needed to figure out some other way to destroy it, and ideally I needed something fast. Luckily, as long as it's in solution, silver fulminate is basically harmless, and this gave me a bit of time to think. What I came up with was to simply add a massive excess of saturated sodium chloride and let the two react for a while under a bit of stirring. The idea here was that silver chloride is far less soluble than silver fulminate, and so the silver fulminate would react with the sodium chloride, forming silver chloride and sodium fulminate. Soluble fulminates are extremely unstable and decompose in solution fairly quickly, leaving behind a solution that can be safely vacuum filtered to collect the silver chloride. So yeah, in case you ever accidentally make silver fulminate and start to panic, just remember you can get rid of it with salt. Also, best probably just keep alcohols away from silver nitrate altogether. Also, I just realized that a minute ago, I think I said that fulminates form in sulfuric acid. So before anyone calls me out in the comments, um, obviously I meant nitric acid. Anyway, now that I've finally prepared some silver nitrate, it's time for the silver mirror. Silver mirroring is applied using a mixture of chemicals called Tollens reagent. Tollens reagent is used mostly in analytical chemistry to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones after a carbonyl group has been identified using Brady's reagent. I'll come back to this in a minute, and in the meantime, to make some Tollens reagent, the first thing I needed to do was to redissolve some of my silver nitrate in a small amount of distilled water. I didn't measure the amount I used here, or really measure anything in the entire video, but suffice it to say this is far more silver nitrate than is necessary for the scale I was going for. After a bit more testing, I found that a 0.1 molar solution of silver nitrate is more than sufficient. In any case, as you can see here, my silver nitrate solution was once again slightly cloudy, and so I guess a tiny amount of chloride must have been hanging out in my beaker or in my allegedly distilled water. Removing this is relatively simple though, and all I did was continually pass it through a coffee filter until the filtrate was mostly clear. 
In retrospect, this next step was going to remove any silver chloride anyway, so the filtering really wasn't necessary, but once I felt I had as pure and clear a solution of silver nitrate as I was going to get, I then began to slowly add some 2.5 molar sodium hydroxide to the silver nitrate. This immediately precipitated the dark brown silver oxide. Normally from this type of reaction, you'd expect a metal hydroxide to precipitate, but silver hydroxide decomposes nearly instantly to its oxide. I kept adding the hydroxide until the solution was slightly alkaline and no more silver oxide precipitated. The slurry was then transferred to a larger beaker, at which point I resumed stirring and began adding a solution of 15 molar ammonia in small 3 milliliter portions. This reacted with the silver oxide to form a soluble diamine silver complex, which is the active compound in Tallinn's reagent. This was continued until all of the silver oxide had redissolved, and then quickly filtered to leave a completely clear solution that was ready to be used. As a side note, I thought once upon a time, hey, ammonia is pretty alkaline, so why not just skip the sodium hydroxide and dissolve silver nitrate straight in ammonia? I thought I was pretty clever here, skipping the standard operating procedure, but this did not work at all, and I honestly don't know why. Now, if you remember a few minutes ago, I mentioned that Tollens reagent can be used to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. This works because aldehydes are more easily oxidized than ketones, and the diamine silver complex is a very mild oxidizing agent. Because of this, aldehydes will reduce the diamine silver complex to metallic silver, while ketones generally will not, and so the formation of silver is a positive test for aldehydes. However, for my purposes here, I just want to make a shiny silver mirror, and so any organic reducing agent will do. To that end, I simply added a few milliliters of a 10% glucose solution to the Tollens reagent under a bit of stirring, which quickly caused the solution to darken. This was next poured into a large test tube, which was placed in a hot water bath to catalyze the reaction. As the reaction proceeded, a thin layer of silver metal plated to the inside of the test tube, forming a nearly perfect mirror finish. The only imperfection in its surface was near the bottom of the tube, which was a result of this tube having survived incinerating many gummy bears, leaving it somewhat rough near the bottom. Now that I had a proof of concept, I started looking around for other things that might be fun to give a mirror finish. My first idea was a watch glass, which I plated by simply adding some Tollens reagent to the glass and then placing it on top of a beaker of boiling water for a few minutes. This also gave a beautiful mirror finish, and given the fact that it's a watch glass, this one could actually make a somewhat practical mirror. I messed around with this one for a while using a green laser pointer, which as you might expect, gave a very good reflection. The final thing I tried was plating the inside of an old light bulb, which was impractically delicate, but the most beautiful thing that came out of this project in my opinion. In any case, that's about all there is to this specific reaction. There is technically a variant to this process that allows silver to be plated on the outer surface rather than the inner surface like I showed here. This other process can also be used to plate a much broader array of materials than just glass. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd like to see in a future video, and I'll give it my best shot. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting, and as always, I want to thank all my wonderful patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital in helping me continue doing what I do here, and very appreciated. As for announcements, um, I'm recording this so far ahead of time that I really don't know what I'm going to be working on at the time. Um, when I do figure it out and post this video, I'll put it in the video description and you can check that out if you're interested. If you're interested in seeing a video on anything I type down there, uh, consider subscribing here on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.